Hello, Arkham Reese here, and doing Arkham Reese plays Back to the Future, Chapter 4. So, almost done with it now. One more to go. Trophies will be at the end of the video, and the times I get them will be in the description as before. Enjoy! Uh, what? Where am I? Ah, Citizen Plus? Citizen Plus? Make sure the McFly boy is prepped for his Citizen Plus treatment by the time I finish with my husband. How is Citizen Brown? I'm afraid it's worse than we imagined. He's gone completely antisocial. Darn. We're using every tool at our disposal to snap him out of it. But I fear that nothing short of a complete personality rebuild will bring our leader back to us. And it's all McFly's fault? Unbelievable, isn't it? One teenage hooligan has brought Hill Valley to the brink of ruin. Ah, well. Let me know when he's ready. I'll be tending to Citizen Brown. I gotta get out of here and rescue Doc. Hello? What? Why is all my stuff locked in a cage? In order to ensure that Citizen Plus patients don't injure themselves, their belongings are placed in a locked box until the completion of their Citizen Plus treatment. Injure themselves? It's a very intensive process. Some people can't handle it. Can I take a look at my stuff for a second? Why? I, uh, want to make sure my guitar neck isn't getting bent. What? Come on, man. My parents spent a fortune on that thing. Fine. Back away from the door, sir. There. How's the guitar? I guess it's okay. Good. Jen? Hey, Jennifer! I gotta get her attention. Martin? Ah, Dad, is that you? Who else would it be? Where are you? Back in the garage. What are you doing in the Citizen Plus ward? Edna threw me in here. She can't do that to my son. How can I help? Could you let me talk to Jennifer? Jennifer Parker? Yeah, she's in the room next door. Let's see, that'd be waiting room beta. Got it. You're all patched in, son. 
Jennifer. Martin, is that you? Where are you? I'm over here, in the camera. Oh, Martin, aren't you in enough trouble already? Trouble? Jen, what are you talking about? You know, with all the drinking and the PTAs. Jennifer, oh, what's wrong with you? You sound strange. I used to be strange, Martin. But thanks to my First Citizen Plus treatment, I'm well on my way to becoming an average, well-adjusted teenager. Citizen Plus? Oh, no. Jen, not you, too. Could you hang around for a few minutes? It's nice to have someone to talk to. I'll be here until the guard comes for me. Then I'll really have to tell him about how you're hijacking the cameras. Oh, come on. Don't be a narc. I'm not a narc. I'm a good citizen. Dad. How can I help, son? I tried to peek over the guard's shoulder to get the combination, but he's too tall. Over his shoulder? Hold on. What? I may have it on tape. Zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance. Ha! What? The camera was high enough to see over his shoulder. Nice work, Dad. The combination is two left, eight right, 18 left, 32 right. All right. Hey, your guitar. I'm sorry, I tried to throw it out. Yeah, the guitar's pretty cool, but this is what I care about. No fair making your dad all misty, son. Okay, Jen, here's a little something I think you're gonna like. At least, I hope you still do. Martin? Jennifer? Oh, Martin. Martin? What are you doing? What's going on here? I have no idea, sir. I was minding my own business when all of a sudden a horrible noise started coming out of that camera. Well, that's not right. Yeah, well, neither is this. No one scrambles my brain, you hear me? No one. I'm Jennifer Parker, rock and roller. Jen? Oh, yeah, right. Jen! No time for small talk, McFly. We need to get you disguised so we can walk out of here. Calvin Klein underwear? Really? There. How do I look? A little short for a stormtrooper, but it'll have to do. Come on! Okay, Hotshot, what's next? Now we rescue Citizen Brown, get the hell out of here, and get things back to the way they're supposed to be. Whatever, just as long as I get to break some stuff. I've got a lot of pent-up hostility right now, you know? Miss Parker. What the? Yeah. I'm here to escort you to the lobby. Your father's waiting for you. Can he wait? I was hoping that this attractive young man could take me on a tour of the facilities. I'm afraid I really must insist, miss. Relax, Jennifer. I've got everything under control. Really? Really. Okay, then. But first... What was that for? For saving me, dummy. Let's go, officer. You know, I'm probably gonna have to write you up for a PDA violation. Don't bite me. What? Rock and roll.
Increase somatic sensory fluids by 17%. I have some of that. Feels like I haven't eaten in years. No, that's Tannins. He's not allowed to eat it until he's taken his pacification pill. We tried to give it to him an hour ago, but he still hasn't swallowed it. Let me try. I could be pretty persuasive. No. Got this door locked up tight. I wonder what sick freak they've got in here. Ah! I should have known. Stop fighting it, darling. You're only hurting yourself. Hi, Biff. Looks like your intercom's busted. Eh, just as well. It'd probably be just a bunch of swearing and mixed metaphors anyway. The guard says I'm not supposed to give you any food until you swallow your pill. Oh, Biff spit. Hey, is that a public display of affection over there? What? Ah, uh, sorry, it was just a shadow. Stop goofing around and get back to work. Yes, sir. Feeding Biff horse tranquilizers? You, God! Who, me? I, I mean, me? Yes, you. As you can see, that slacker of a technician is sleeping on the job again. Please be a dear and tend to the Citizen Plus control panel, will you? Uh, sure. Okay, Doc, I'm in. Now, how do I get you out of here without turning you into a vegetable? Over there, Jeez, where's the off button on this thing? Hey, an equalizer. At least, I think it's an equalizer. Volume. Finally, a word I can understand. Okay, that moved him a few inches. Maybe I can blast him right out the door. Oh, factory. I think I know what that means. What the? Looks like the aroma tanks have clogged themselves again. Oh, thank you. I hadn't noticed that. Come on, make yourself useful. I'm sorry about the delay, dear. This'd go a lot easier if you just gave up this madness about time machines and altering the past. You should concentrate on the future. There is no future for us. You won't think that in a few more hours. Anna, please, think about the consequences of your actions. Me? You're the one threatening the social... Let's get ready to blow the 
Morris join. What was that? You! What are you doing? Get my friend out of here, you nutcase. Okay, that was a little less dramatic than I had expected. Whoa! do now now we wait for the guards to clear out so we can make a break for your time machine hey it's my mom hey don't talk to her she can give us away where is the DeLorean anyway I have the wreck code to my secret lab near Clayton Ravine Clayton Ravine as in Clara Clayton why is that significant well, Claire is kind of supposed to be your wife, so, yeah. Fascinating. Shouldn't we go help? Once we go back and change history, none of this will ever happen. I guess. What the heck was Edna doing to you back there? She was trying to rebuild my personality from the ground up, erasing the parts she didn't like. Harsh. All right, Dad. No offense, Your Honor, but why'd you marry Edna anyway? She's... she's kind of crazy. Yes, now. But back when we were first dating, her madness was tempered by an ironclad sense of right and wrong. At least, that's how it seemed to me at the time. Mom, Dad, no! They'll be fine. Once we repair the time stream, none of this will ever have happened. I guess you're right. Looks like the coast is clear. Great. Let's go fix the DeLorean. I'm afraid I'll have to do that without you, Martin. What? Why? Well, from what little I understand of time travel, if you help me rebuild the time machine, your presence in the repair efforts could cause some sort of temporal paradox after we return to 1931. So what am I supposed to do? Just hang out here in Bizarro Hill Valley until you fix the time machine? Exactly. But don't worry. If things work out according to plan, you won't even notice I'm gone. You know, for a second there, you sounded almost as confusing as the real Doc. See? We're making progress already. See you soon, Martin. Good luck, Your Honor. Oh, and you might want to stay off the streets for a few seconds. Stay off the street? Citizen Brown? Emmett? He's not coming back, you know. What are you talking about? Emmett, without me to guide him? He's almost useless. Before I found him, he was a miserable failure who never finished anything. But with me to inspire him, look at what we've built! You're not the only inspiration in Doc's life, you know. In my timeline, he married one of the sweetest women of the 19th century. Sweetness. Yeah. Emmett needs discipline. 
discipline to stay focused. He's so easily distracted. You think you've inspired Doc? I'll have you know that without you, Emmett Brown is destined to build a time-traveling DeLorean and a flying time train. Preposterous. Emmett couldn't even build a dog feeder without me to guide him. Yeah, well, he did that, too. Yeah, you've inspired him, all right. Inspired him to turn Hill Valley into a bunch of uptight dorks. I wouldn't expect a delinquent like you to understand. Okay, Your Honor. Starting to get a little concerned here. It worked! Ha ha! One second I'm in the present, the next I'm six months in the past! Amazing! Six months? It took you six months to repair the time machine? Six months, my family fortune, and a sketchy deal with a gang of Libyan nationals. But it was all worth it for this moment. Ah! Emmett, don't do this. You need help. Oh, blow it out of your exhaust port, dear. Now that I've escaped into the past, your pack of divorce lawyers can't... <gasps> Mark, how long have you been waiting for me? A couple of minutes, maybe. That's curious. I set the repair time circuits to arrive only a couple of seconds after I left. Oh, well. I'm sure there's no need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration on the time circuits. Here. What's this? Clothes for our trip. We can't have you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit. Wait, our trip? You didn't think I was going to let you erase the worst mistake of my life without my help, did you? Fine! Leave! Time circuit set for August 26, 1931. You ready to go, Your Honor? Call me, Doc. This is where I last saw him. You. Teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Ugh. Luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the type to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there. I mean, um, our relationship never moves beyond the hand-holding stage. Well, will you look at that? The old town theater. Very cool. I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat? No good yellow-bellied stool? It never did matter to see Frankenstein, though. But you're going to. That's what we're here for, remember? Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspiring with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my younger self re-inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to... Go inside huh? and check it out. 
First rule of time travel, Doc, never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It could cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget your Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Michael, you do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine! Yeah, well, girls are great and all, but don't get carried away. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, sure. I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket car. But... More trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. No, no, you were really onto something with the rocket car. You've just gotta... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. What day is it? Why, it's opening day. The opening day of the expo. Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Corleone. October 12th? Doc? Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. No, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah? That should have been a tip off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits. And the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in a Cenozoic age. Ooh. Or worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna? Where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. You were right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Oh! I'll talk to her. You'd better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey, you! Quit blocking the drive! All car of the future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck!
spell it? B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Corleone! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh... Have you seen Emmett? Uh, no. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those gut instincts are important. If you disliked him right off the bat. Oh, but I didn't know him then. Now I know him inside and out. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Corleone, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Ahem. <clears throat> You said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Corleone, you know that? Well, his physical appearance for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what, I'll take it on a test drive one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. It worked, didn't it? I'm afraid not. 
In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the part for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Oh. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Ah. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow, and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with... Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Oh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. See you, Trixie. From this Chamber of Wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. <clears throat> Back again, Mr. Corleone? What can I help you with? Well, I was thinking. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume, she's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. How about you? Have you got any questions for me? Uh, no. Then kindly let me pass. I'm afraid I can't until I've located your registration form. Oh, this is absurd! Oh, jeez, this guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? 
because Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cube all these days. You seem kind of angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that'd curl your socks. Really? Oh, yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just, well, it just cheeses me off, you know? So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on. No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Ooh! All right, Junior, you win. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I, um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Wow. Okay. Hey, what's with your teeth? My teeth? Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, man, what's going on with your teeth? It's nothing. Nothing. I... I... Oh, crap. What's wrong? It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes? A crate of them fell off the truck while I was unloading it, and uh, I just can't stop eating them. How was I to know they turned my teeth green? Well, the algae part might have been a clue. Please don't rat me out the Audi, okay? I really need this job. No problem, but you better let me keep the cakes. Sure thing, pal. Hang loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Trixie sure got some nice, uh, antlers. This is definitely something Edna wouldn't approve of. How about an algae cake? No thanks. I'm trying to cut down. Yes, I am feeling a bit peckish. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that crap? The expo. How about an algae cake? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Not bad. Algae, you say? I'm going to suggest that they add that to the menu at the orphanage. How about an algae cake? Much obliged. Mm. Mm. That was different. How about an algae cake? One doesn't normally think of algae as a dessert item, but, uh, what the hell? Well, it's got a very, um, unique flavor. about an algae cake? Ugh, that tastes exactly like the slugs that Edna was pumping into me back in the Citizen Plus ward.
You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? Oh, sir! Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill I Valley... I don't need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once... The winsome wench of Winnipeg. Her past doesn't matter to... Trixie? What is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even an American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the Expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen, so if you're really a Canadian... I'm being fired? You're firing me? I don't want to. Here. Yeah. Take it back! Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Let's talk. Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue-nosed bitty eat her heart out! That's great! I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows but up... we gotta do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. But I was in this play once. The Parlor Maid's Predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only, I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. My future wouldn't be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Corleone. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you've shaved off your hair, but... Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interest. You see, I know what you're up to. Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. Go! I'll keep her occupied till you get back. The century looks bright for our fair metropolis. Jump with us 50 years into the future for a peek at Hill Valley circa 1981. Courtesy of Hal's hardware and the collective imagination of mankind. Could this be our venerable town square? Yes, indeed. Though the form looks strange and new, the function remains the same as ever. But where are all the people? Why, they're underground. A network of burrows extends a mile into the earth giving future Hill Valley's 10 million citizens plenty of space to work, play, and raise their families. Agricultural advances will make it a breeze to feed our burgeoning population. 
Tired of waiting for Mother Nature to do her job? Just press a button. Presto! An artificial rainstorm drenches the valley's thirsty crops. Just borrowing it. Hang on, Emmett. Hope you're ready for a big breakup. Damn it. Thanks again for your assistance, Detective Parker. Detective? What the hell is Kid doing here? Nothing criminal, I assure you. I was just getting a mind map of Mr. Tannen for our exhibition at the Expo. The authorities wouldn't allow Edna and I to stage a demonstration of the mental alignment meter with a violent felon, but this little baby is just as good. Okay, let's see now, what's next? Check the stew, sort the maps. Ooh, I almost forgot that. Edna really is cracking the whip, isn't she? Well, yes, but she's got my best interests at heart. Without her, I can get so distracted. Did she send you down here to check up on me? Uh, yeah, she wanted to come herself, but... She's busy too, I know. Well, you're a poor substitute for Edna's lovely features, but make yourself at home. Thanks. No thanks are necessary. Without you, I'd never be where I am now, in love with a woman of my dreams, and a mere six hours from my first public triumph as a scientist. Wait a minute. Six hours? Jumping Jehoshaphat, I'm running out of time! What's this? That's a can of used motor oil, rocket fuel waste, and assorted chemical sludge left over from my abandoned rocket car. Gross. Accounting doesn't enter into it, but it is disgusting. Would you mind disposing of it on your way out? Uh, sure. What's this? The mind map cards from the dozens of subjects I've tested during the last few weeks. I've got to get them sorted before the expo begins. Why? Edna's got this grand scheme to catalog all of Hill Valley citizens by their mental alignment. Isn't that cute? Not really. Mind if I... Go ahead. Ah, oh, that'd be Mr. Needleman's card. I'll just put this in the stack with the other hooligans. Looks like you got a lot of hooligans. Yeah, about 90% of Hill Valley thus far. It's a little disturbing. How does the mental alignment thing work? Here, I'll show you. Hey! The test subject wears this mind mapping helmet, which probes the brain by measuring fluctuations in skin conductance and electrical resistance on the surface of the parietal lobe. Uh huh. When I turn on the mind mapping helmet with this radio switch, the subject is exposed to a series of visual stimuli intended to provoke a series of positive or negative responses, as indicated by these lights on the helmet. Hey, is that. As the responses are recorded, they're relayed to this special typewriter, which prints out a punch card that represents the subject's mind map. All I see is a bunch of holes. Well, uh, to you, maybe. But to our mental alignment meter, this mind map is nothing less than a peek into your subconscious. Observe, as I place your mind map into the M.A.M. Layabout. Is that machine calling me a slacker? No, your own physiological responses did.
want an algae cake? Sure. Careful, don't let all the flavor escape. Ah, that smells much better. Mmm, that smells good.
Ah. Mmm, that smells good. Hey, Emmett, I think your mind map test is broken. Oh, well, that switch just keeps shorting out on me. No time to fix it now. I'll have to take care of it at the expo. Looks like I'm not going to be doing any more mind maps. I guess I'll test this out and hope for the best. Bingo! Now Emmett's mind map is as bad as Tannen's. Now all I have to do is swap this out with Emmett's original mind map and... Damn, it's own machine will do him in. What's this? It's the placard we'll be putting in front of our booth at the expo. The scientist that caught Kid Tannen? A small exaggeration, but Edna says it'll attract investors. What do you think of the picture? You look a little... constipated. What? Edna said I looked intense. Yeah, intensely focused on taking it. I get the picture. Hmm. I'll have to find a better one. Unfortunately, there's a lot to choose from. Heavy. Extremely. Mother has been rather obsessive about photographically cataloging my life. Okay, Emmett. Get ready to meet the new you. Hey! What? I almost left behind my mind map card. We're gonna show it off at the expo as a rare example of a model citizen. Edna kill me if I forgot that. She might kill you anyway when she gets a look at that mind map. Once Emmett gets to the expo, I'll try to figure out how to get him to put his card in the mental alignment meter. But for now, I'd better concentrate on making Emmett a slob who cheats on his girlfriend. Hey, Emmett, I've got an idea. What? Why don't I take your photo album over to Edna so she can pick out your new picture? That's a great idea. She's got a better eye for these things than I do anyway. Thanks, pal. Don't mention it. Hey, Emmett, I've got a... Whoa! <laughs> Whoops. What the heck? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Your, your suit's ruined. Edna's gonna be royally P.O.'d. Wrong. What? When Edna gave me this suit, I realized that the probability of me keeping it clean was infinitesimally remote, so I spent a few hours whipping up this. Whoa. What was that? A chemical compound capable of wiping the grime off any surface. Damn it, you'll make a fortune. Not anytime soon, I'm afraid. Due to an inerrant instability in its molecular makeup, after 12 hours, the cleanser's component chemicals break down into a series of claw shredding enzymes, rendering it unsuitable for commercial use. Wait a minute, does that mean your suit's gonna dissolve in 12 hours? Hey gods, no. The solution dissipates into the air after it's applied. But it does mean that after this batch of cleanser ages another 11 hours and 53 minutes, it would eat away this suit faster than a thousand starving moss. And that would be a crisis of unimaginable proportions. Why? Because this suit belongs to Edna's grandfather, who wore it on his wedding day. Poor guy was gunned down just a few years later. Emmett? Well, enough wool gathering. Back to work.
That cleanser doesn't seem very portable. It isn't, but this is. A perfume bottle? Yes. No. I mean, yes, it's a perfume bottle, but inside is a concentrated dose of my all-purpose cleanser. With a little luck, this should last me through the next 12 hours before its component chemicals break down into a series of cloth-destroying enzymes. Clever. What the hell is that? What? Sorry, I, I thought I saw a tarantula. <laughs> what? I was just thinking about the future. All that talk about Edna's grandfather made me realize something. Please let it be something about lightning. Life can be short, sometimes brutally so. So why not seize the day and grab your happiness while you can? I'm not sure I like where this is going. I was saving this for next Valentine's Day, but why should I? I know what I want. Emmett. No. I'm gonna ask Edna to marry me. Right now. No. Oh, right, right. I'll wait until tonight at the expo. It'll be much more romantic that way. Just think. By this time tomorrow, Edna and I will be engaged and will be the toast of the scientific community. And I owe it all to you. You're welcome. Hey, Emmett, got a sec? Why, yes. In fact, I've got several. You can't marry Edna. Why not? You're too young to get married. Nonsense. Back in the old country, a man my age already have two kids and a farm. Besides, what's the use of waiting when you're in love? There's someone better out there. Trust me. I know you mean well, but look at me. I'm an awkward teenager with poor social skills and a predilection for prattling on about obscure scientific minutia. Frankly, it's a miracle that one woman has found me desirable. It could be decades before another one comes along. Uh, let's just drop it. Fine. You look busy. Why don't we talk later? Sure thing. Hey, Emmett, I've got to go out for a while. I thought Edna sent you to make sure I wasn't getting distracted. Oh, you'll be fine. It's a good thing I did this before Emmett's 12-hour time limit, where the cleanser might have dissolved the fur. I brought Emmett's photo album like you asked. Let's see. Gee, he's not bad looking. In an egghead kind of way. Remember, I don't want you seducing him for real. I ain't a cradle robber, kiddo. How about the furs and the diamond? I'll get him to you. Voila! Say! Pretty snazzy for a phony rock. Gimme. Keep that up and I may take a real shine to ya. I'd rather you take a fake shine to Emmett. I'm working on it. Now bring me those furs, and we'll be in business. 
Let's slip out of those furs, shall we? Hey, Trixie. Are these furs good enough? Well, they're a little ratty, but, uh, they'll work. So, you got everything you need for your big scene? Everything except for your friend. Emmett Brown, redheaded guy about yay high. He'll be the one with Edna Strickland. Not for long, he won't. Great. It'll be safe in there. Hey, Doc. I mean, uh, Mr. Sagan. Excuse me a moment, Miss Strickland. I've got her neutralized for the moment. How's the plan proceeding on your end? About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, what am I supposed to look for again? A signal that it's done evaluating the time circuits. The analysis can take a while. Be sure to let me know when the light turns green, and I'll take her out for another test run. Doc said to tell him when the light on his diagnostic thingy went green. Hey, the light's green. That means Doc could take the DeLorean out again. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. Yes? About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, the light's gone green. Wonderful. If the systems check out, I should be able to take it for another test run. I've got to run a short errand, Miss Strickland. I suggest you think about what I've been saying. Oh, I will. When did you land this time? Nine hours and 37 minutes ago. Ouch. Frankly, it started to get a little difficult to avoid running into myself. Still, the time jump yielded some interesting new data on the flux field. I'll run some more tests and we'll see what we find. No green light yet. Hey, the light's green. I see. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. Not at all, Mr. Sagan. Take your time. Much obliged, Miss Strickland. Yes? Your chronometer's gone green again. Excellent. Let's hope this time my test run is a success. I'm sorry to desert you again. Yes, well, you've left me with plenty to think about. Any luck this time? Depends what you mean by luck. My arrival time was off again. By how much? Eight hours this time. Gave me the chance to take in three showings of Frankenstein. Good movie. 
A bit implausible from a scientific perspective, but I can see how my younger self would have been mesmerized. But what about the DeLorean? Oh, yes. I did get one critical piece of information. The chromium elements in my circuits became unstable during the temporal shift. I should replace them with titanium. Great! Now, unfortunately, titanium won't become commercially available till the coal process is perfected in nine years. Nine years? But there may be another solution. I'm going to fire up the chronometric analyzer again. Then, while I'm story in there, you can... Uh-oh. Where did it go? The lab! Stop! You better get down there before she makes the situation impossible. I'll tend to the DeLorean. Age to perfection. Hey Emmett, I'm back. <clears throat> oh my! You know, I thought you were coming down here to keep Emmett focused on his invention. No, oh, she is. But she's generously scheduled brief canoodling breaks every 45 minutes to keep my mind fresh. Time's up, dear. Let's get back to work. Shall we? Now, Mr. Corleone, what can I do for you? Mr. Sagan says he needs to talk to you back at the high school. He does? Whatever for? He says he's got a lead on the speakeasy arsonist. He does, does he? Well, I'm not sure anyone cares about that old story anymore. But I suppose I could spare a few minutes in the service of solving a crime. Will you be all right without me, sweetheart? It'll be tough, but I think I'll muddle through. Try to keep him focused. He's so easily distracted. Don't I wish. Hmm. There it is. I've been looking all over for my portable anti-stick, anti-stain formula. Where'd you find it? Um, out by the trash? That's strange. I haven't been out there for hours. Oh well. Are you gonna spray your jacket? It's looking a little dusty. Not until it's really dirty. This cleanser doesn't grow on trees, you know. Well, some of the ingredients grow on trees, but the rest are synthesized polycarbonate really detergent dirty? blends. I can do that. I'll wait until you're at the expo to show Edna what a suit-destroying slob you can be. Well, that's about it. It is? Yep. As soon as I get all this stuff loaded into the truck, I'll be ready for the expo. Want to lend me a hand? Uh, how about I go tell Edna you're coming? I'll, uh, get her ready for you to pop the question. Good thinking. Go on ahead. I'll meet you there. I really hope this works. Marty! Doc! What's all the hustle and bustle? It's almost time for the opening ceremony. Holy jeez, I better work fast. I think I got it all worked out. When it all comes together, Edna will think you're the worst guy in town. I just need a couple more pieces. Well, don't go to too much trouble. What do you mean? Oh! You thought of an easier way to break them up? Not exactly. You see, I, I've been mulling things over, and... Uh, in the timeline you're from... The right timeline? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got a wife. A great wife! And Clara, and kids, and a dog, and a bitch in time train, and... And Edna? How does her story turn out? How does she end up? Oh, well, Edna ends up... Um... To be honest, she ends up kinda... sad. Sad? She lives with some cats in a dinky little apartment, and... she spends most of her time yelling out her window at people, and collecting newspapers, and living in the past. I see. Perhaps 
We've been going about this problem the wrong way. Do we really have to completely obliterate my timeline so we can restore yours? Doc? Maybe we could have the best of both worlds. I could be with Edna, but it could be a little bit, you know, more healthy. Can you hear yourself? Do, do you know what you're saying? Let me remind you. She took over your life. She kept you from doing what you were meant to do till there was nothing left of you but this hollow shell. Maybe, but she only did it because she cared. I don't believe this. All I'm saying is, let's stop and take a breath. This elaborate plan to derail my younger self's love life is the short-term misery worth the long-term gain? Maybe we can find a third way. One where everybody wins. What do you think? Uh... No! I'm sorry, Doc. I can't go along with what you're saying. You don't belong with Edna. So you're determined to break us up, in spite of my stated wishes? Basically, yeah. Then there's nothing left to say? Where, where are you going? Why should it matter to you? Aren't you planning on overriding me? Hey, Emmett, what's keeping you? No, oh, uh, hello, Michael. I guess I've got a mild case of stage fright. I'm about to play my big scene, you know? No telling how Edna's gonna react. Wish me luck! Oh, for Pete's sake. You've, uh, got something on your suit. Oh, so I have. Anti-stain formula, work your magic. Emmett! Just in the nick of time. Um, step back now. We're gonna need a little space here. Oh, aren't you a vision? Like something that descended from the heavens. Yes, I'm feeling a bit elevated at the moment. There's something I've just got to ask Wait, you. Wait, your tie's a bit crooked. I've been holding it inside for weeks now, and I've simply got to get it off my chest. Oh. Uh-oh. My grandfather's suit! My formula! Oh. Look! Turn your head! I'll be right back, and we can try this all over and again. And it's Lethrop Brown! Huh? Trixie Trotter. How do you know this woman? I don't! I mean, I listened to some of her records, and I may have taken a picture or two yes. of her, but I... Go on! Deny to the world that you know me! Perhaps it is true, but I know you all too well. What is going on here? You rich boys are all alike. You think material possessions can compensate for a broken heart. Well, you can take back your furs, and take back this gaudy diamond, Ouch. too! I don't need your expensive presents. I need you. And more importantly, little Emmett Jr. needs you. Well, Edna, I... Don't Edna me. Apparently, you are not the man I took you for. But I am, see? The mental alignment meter proves it. I am the man you fell in love with. Let me see that card. I should have known. A degenerate criminal. What? Get out of my sight! I never want to see you again! That was rough, Emmett. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but things are gonna be okay. You and me can... 
Damn it. That went off great, huh? Yeah. Maybe too great. You had to go through that scene at the expo. Things didn't work out the way you expected, but everything's gonna turn out okay. See, I I know how this story turns out, and the story is over. <gasps> Stay there, Emmett. Don't throw away your future. I don't have any future. Mm -hmm. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. Stop! What are you doing up here? Don't jump! I wasn't gonna jump! Uh, then what do you- This is where I come when I want to think. Oh. When I want to be alone. Oh. Well, I'm afraid there isn't any time for that. Y you need to act. Can't you take a hint? I don't want you here. I don't need you. You don't know what you need. And you do? As a matter of fact, yeah. You need... To get some perspective. Think about it. All the people who have it even worse than you. For instance, uh, Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein. I tell you that my very life force is drained away, and you want to talk about Hollywood monster movies. It's a very inspirational monster movie. Especially the scene where they bring the monster to life. There's this big gurney that lifts him up into the air, and... and see, there's this wild storm going on, and lightning crashing everywhere. It's amazing. And you just gotta see it, Emmett. It'll change your life. Look at my helmet. Which light is flashing? Yellow. Apathy. I don't care about movies. I don't care about anything anymore. And I never will. Don't give me that. You care. You still care about inventing things. <laughs> inventing is overrated. 99% hype, 10% fraud. Name one invention that ever did anybody any good. Uh, how about... Help me out here. You're getting on my nerves, Corleone. At least you would be if I still cared about anything. Me! You care about me, Doc. <laughs> you? Yeah. You. You did this to me. I did what? I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing, and disappear. Two months later, you show up again, you trick me into making a hero out of myself and getting involved with Edna Strickland. Then you appear a third time and pretend to be my friend just so you can yank the rug out from under me and send me sprawling into the dirt. Okay, I can work with that. I loathe you, Michael Corleone. Or is that even your real name? Marty. My name is Marty. Oh, so everything you've told me has been a lie. More or less. Why? Why did you ruin my life? I did it for fun. You ruined my life for fun? Yeah, that's how I get my kicks. You bastard. And all that time you spent building up my dreams telling me I was going to be a great scientist. Yeah, what a laugh. Dreams are only for people with guts enough to follow them. You're saying I don't have guts? You? <laughs> Look at you. What do you know? A person like you? You don't know the first thing about me. I have more dreams in my little finger than you'll ever have. Hey, daydreams don't count. Daydreams? That's what they said to Edison. That's what they said to Einstein. That's what they said to... Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, and look what they accomplished. I'm sick of people telling me what I can and can't do. First my father, then Edna, now you! Listen to me, good 
From now on, I'm living my life my way. I'm taking my own advice and I'm following my own ideas. My ideas. Do you hear me? My ideas. Great Scott. I've got it. Got what? A solution. My invention. I know how to make it work. Mental alignment meter? No, no, my airborne personal transport device. The rocket car? Not rockets, not rockets at all. That was my mistake. The basic idea was sound, but the propulsion system was unworkable. Lightning, the lightning. Suddenly the answer is clear. It came to me all at once, like, like... A bolt of lightning? Exactly. Static electricity. Super ionized static electricity powering the asynchronous oscillation of frictionless plates inside the... What's this stupid thing doing on my head? Damn it. Yeah, you're, you're you again. Here, I've been wasting my time with silly mind-reading tricks when there's serious science to be done. <gasps> and the expo begins at eight. <gasps> let's get the hell out of here before anything else happens. What? I said, let's get out of here before anything... <laughs> Anything useful on you? Only my wallet. Oh, and this portable anti-stick, anti-stain formula. Don't. Hang in there. Very funny. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Damn it! What? Can you climb up? I'm afraid I can't find a convenient purchase for my upper limbs. What? No handhold! I'll help you finish your new invention. Great! The first step is to get me down from here! Hold on! I've got an idea. Good, cause I'm fresh out! Damn it, solution. This stuff's dangerous. Emmett's helmet. I don't think he needs it now. Ah, 
Gotcha. Let's get out of here. Your pants, they're stuck. Do something before we're crushed. No. What are you doing? Trust me. Hold on. <laughs> what did you say your name was again? Marty. Marty? Thanks. Don't mention it. <laughs> tungsten. The catalyst will need to be made out of tungsten, given the temperature within the convertible will no doubt be intense. We'll have to harvest the filaments from all the light bulbs in my house. Your invention? You think you can finish it before the end of the expo? Think? I've got to. My future depends on it. Then let's go. Of course, the oscillating plates will need to be calibrated precisely. Even the slightest misalignment could cause the magnetic field to fluctuate in intensity, leading to sudden shifts in polarity. The results could conceivably be catastrophic. Ah, who cares? My thought exactly. Science should be messy and unpredictable, or else where's the fun of it? Need a lift? Mr. Sagan, got the kinks worked out of your car of the future? Uh, not all of them, but at least the DeLorean's Monday terrestrial functionality remains intact. As usual, I have not the slightest idea what you're talking about. In fact, you remind me of someone... someone I used to... <laughs> there, there, my dear, don't worry. I'm sure we'll all turn out well in the end. Maybe for everyone else, but I suddenly feel very much like someone who's going to be alone and unloved for a very long time. Maybe I should get a cat. Nonsense. I can state with nearly 100% certainty that you're going to have a long, fulfilling life. How can you know that? I think you'll find I know almost everything worth knowing about you and young Emmett and his friends. Tell me, how much do you know about Michael Corleone? Let me explain it again. I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. It was science. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. If Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Doc, 